Well, I'm joined now by Will Self, the author and professor at Brunel University, who voted for Jeremy Corbyn, and by Matthew Paris, a Times columnist and former Conservative MP. Uh, so, Will Self, are you getting what you bargained for? Happy so far? Yes, yes, uh, very much what we bargained for. Party in total disarray, uh, heading probably towards a schism. Uh, that's why I voted for Corbyn. I believe that the, the current dispensation in British politics doesn't reflect the underlying beliefs of the electorate. Well, you might want the party to split, but plenty of other Labour supporters don't, so they might be a bit dismayed to hear you Well, the, the, the trouble with Labour Party supporters, like Tory Party supporters, is that they, they suffer from mental diplopia, a division in their minds, where they, they seem to be able to think two contradictory things at once. Let's look at what the issue that started to derail Corbyn immediately. Europe. Are you mentally <laughs> diplopic? Or... <laughs> I've got that right. Yes. <laughs> Good yes. to get that straight. I, I can, as a Tory tribalist, rejoice in Labour's disarray, but I can, thinking rather a, more along Will Self's lines, wonder what's going to happen to the whole of our politics. And if you did get a Labour schism, I think you'd get a Tory schism mm. sooner or later, because there would be the centre-right of the Labour Party who'd have more in common with the centre-left of the Tory party than either did with the extremes of their own sides. And, Will may be right, that, that, that could be in the long term an interesting and good development in British politics, but boy are we in for a roller coaster ride. Well, it needs to go in line, of course, with, with a change in the electoral system. Mm. But let's look at the issue that's, that's really chopping the parties apart. It isn't so much the economic issues, though it seems to be a classic right-left ding-dong, neoliberalism versus some new variant of Keynesianism. It's actually Europe. Europe has been the shard in the heart of the Tory party now for a quarter of a century and longer. And it's actually present in the Labour Party as well. Labour have just had the luxury of watching the Tories tear each other apart. But it's never naturally... The left of the Labour Party has never naturally been pro-Europe. That's and, a delusion. And do you think some of those splits in the Tory party will actually re-emerge because there'll be a sort of sense of complacency about a weak opposition? There are already people in the Conservative Party saying, now there isn't an opposition, we have the opportunity, the space to do some really right-wing Tory things. And you notice that George Osborne, in an interview he gave to the New Statesman, was very clear that it's important for the Conservative Party to hold to the centre ground. I think he's aware of the danger. As for, as for Corbyn himself, it's, you know, it's remarkably difficult to think of anything interesting to say <laughs> about his arrival. You're doing pretty well so far. <laughs> it, it, it's like... A bear comes to live in your house, and you can argue, will his, will his claws tear the sofa? Where will the bear poo? What happens if people come to, Usually to in dinner? Usually the Well, the fact is, it's a bear. And, um, and that, that, that's all there is to be said. It's a disaster. <laughs> Corbyn a bear? I mean, can you say what Corbynism is? Well, politics is the art of the possible. It, it has to be in a, in a, in a democracy like mm. ours. Uh, and, and so you have to... If people keep asking, why is our politics so boring? Why is there so little scope for the kind of ideas that Corbyn's bringing into play? It's because they're impossibilities. Mm. It's quite simple. Within both our co current constitutional problems, which are considerable, and a wider geopolitical context, the sort of things that Corbyn are talking about, no matter how much I agree with them emotionally, do not represent the possibilities. So Prime Minister Corbyn, an impossibility, then? I think so, definitely, yeah. But you're voting for... I mean, this is crazy, isn't it? Because you surely a Labour government mm. is better than a Tory government where you're sitting. Um, yes, I think a Labour government would be better than a Tory government of a certain kind. I mean, there have been... You know, bear in mind, I didn't vote Labour after, after 97. Yeah, but you've so, backed the wrong horse if you're more interested in a Labour government because a lot of people are saying Jeremy Corbyn won't get elected, well, I, including I'm, you. I, you. You may say it's cheap schadenfreude, but the delight to see those Blairite uh, supporters of the Iraq war kicked out of their, their sinecures was, was more pleasing to me than almost anything that's happened this year. It was worth it for that. Matthew Paris? I think the, the Corbyn leadership could unravel much faster mm. than anybody thinks. People say, oh, well, at least he's got to do the party conference, at least he's got to do the Scottish elections next year. I, it's unravelling at a frightening pace. And when the ch Labour chief whip can't keep her own mm. team uh, on board, I really wonder whether he'll last to the end of the month. Yeah. Unravelling already? Well, his, his only chance, is, is as, I, as I see it, would be to somehow... Uh, impose upon or get Labour, the parliamentary party, to support vigorously an idea of electoral reform, uh, which in a way is, is accepting the, the emergent new status quo in British politics and trying to run with that. If he tries to cleave to traditional 
uh, bipartisan politics, he's finished. And I agree with Matthew, it could be weeks. So what's your best piece of advice for him in a nutshell? For Corbyn? Well, he's going to have to re reach out hands of, of deep friendship to the existing PLP, and he's going to have to severely compromise some of his views. I mean, the point is the people he's dealing with are much younger than him. They don't even remember Clause 4. <laughs> Labour's talking about how it's gained 30,000 members just since his election. I mean, there is a possibility, isn't there, that all these voters he engaged during this campaign will... Not, there were non-voters before yes. in the general election. They might get out and vote in the general election, and then he's saved, isn't he? Uh, they might, but they also might get out and vote in another leadership election. And what you could have, mm. which I don't think we've ever happened in our history, is a parliamentary party in a real civil war with its own membership in the country, the membership keeping sending back leaders whom the parliamentary party didn't want. It's never happened. Like it would be fascinating. Yes, yes. <laughs> Matthew Perez, Will Self, thank you very much for joining me.